Hey everybody, I'm electionpdq.com. I'm going to take you through the inventory best practices to set up your inventory and make sure that you get you are getting the most out of it. Now understand this, um, the settings, it's an art, not a science, okay? Because it depends on your network and what you've got things installed on. So what I'm going to show you are all the different ways that you can adjust this and uh, hopefully you'll find the sweet spot for your network and your, situ your situation. So if you go to preferences, that's options, preferences, Let's start with Active Directory. Now again, Active Directory Sync, if you're using Active Directory, is you know going to be your best buddy, right? Because you know once somebody puts it in Active Directory, it's going to automatically sync. Just make sure when you turn your auto sync on it, I think it defaults to one hour. You know, I wouldn't uh, scan every hour. That's kind of aggressive. Maybe once a day or once a week, depending on how many machines are coming and going out of your network. But again, then again, and the other thing is, you know, make sure you're not syncing disabled computers if you don't want to see those, but that's a good setting because it takes you know the work of you having to go add those machines on your own into inventory out the way. Um, the next thing, let's just jump down here to database. Okay, database is where all this data is stored. Okay, so it's a very very good idea to at least once a month um, optimize your database. Okay, now understand when you optimize your database, it's going to clean up you know deleted space, those kind of things, that, uh, and just basically help the performance of the backend database. Something to remember though, when you do this uh, uh, optimized database, it will shut down the background service. So any scans that are running at that time will be aborted. So, you know, just, you know, check to see what's scanning before you run your optimization. Another thing, best practice, uh, I like to get my backups off the machine that's being backed up. So right out the gate, they're gonna back, you know, the default is to back up to the machine itself so just point this to a file share somewhere else make sure it's a good UNC path and then you know determine the number of backups you want but get that off the machine in case your machine has a problem all right let's jump down to network let's talk heartbeat okay auto heartbeat what does that do that basically sends a ping out and the interval right now the default is 300 seconds which is do some math there I think that's every five minutes okay which is great if you don't have a really, really large environment, okay? But once you start getting up over, you know, 1,500 machines, if you start doing the math, you know, we can wait up to two seconds for a response from a heartbeat. You start doing that math, it could spawn itself again before it finishes. So once you start getting up over that, it's a good idea to start bumping that up to, you know, 600 once every 10 minutes or so, so that you're not, you know, doing this constant ping across your network, okay? Now the other thing on here is you get test multiple addresses and name resolution. The nice thing about that is if you've got laptops moving from you know office to building to office building, or if they're moving from a you know a docking station to wireless, you can still get your scans on those machines even if they've got multiple addresses, IP addresses. So that's your network settings. Now if you jump down to PDQ deploy, okay, anytime there's a deployment, we're going to keep the records of that deployment on here. It is a good idea after a while to clean those up. So 180 days, you know, keep that for a half a year. You know, it's a preference setting, just understand whatever you put there, it's gonna affect. So if you keep it for a year, a full year, it's gonna be more data in your database than if you keep it for 180 days. So again, if it's important to you, that's where you set it. You know, if you're seeing some issues with, you know, excessive amounts of deployments and stuff that's just old that you don't care about that's where you set it to auto clean that up which brings us now to performance okay computer scan timeout 10 minutes that's pretty good i mean i guess uh this is how long it's going to wait for that scan data to come back so uh, i think 10 is probably good if you've got you know a slower network you may want to bump that up and your wmi timeout that's how long it'll wait for the wmi uh, query to run and return before it says it's not returning data but the big one here is concurrent scans how many machines can we send out you know instructions to go scan at once the setting right now is 32 okay if you got a big network you can bump that to you know 64 if you want that kind of a thing just understand you know you now have uh, processes that have been spawned that it's keeping track of waiting for that information to come back so you could, if you bump that number too high, actually bog down that console machine. So again, find your sweet spot to see, you know, where that works best for you. Uh, the TCP, the service TCP connection, 
So this, it's a personal thing. Uh, I find if I disable that, my connections to the machine or the computers that it's connecting to are considerably faster. However, if you are jumping multiple domains, you either want to take the default, and I think the default's about 20 seconds, or the timeout, and I find the timeout that seems to work the best if you're jumping multiple domains is, you know, five seconds, you know, somewhere to five, 10 seconds seems to help out with those connections. Um, and then <clears throat> finally, let's just talk about scanning and the offline status. Now, I like to hit ping before scanning, okay? And it's just, you know, you can send a scan out and it'll try and connect to the machine and it'll, you know, it's gonna wait that time. But if I ping first, ping, it's answering, send the scan. There's no wait for that machine to respond. It already knows it's responded and it sends the scan out there. Uh, on the flip side, again, if a machine's offline, you can send a wake on LAN, assuming that your network's set up and your NIC and your BIOS on the machines is all set up. You can send that wake on LAN. Just understand it can wait up to about six minutes for that wake on LAN to wake the machine up because, you know, sends the instructions, the machine's got to come back online, you know, and then, so it can wait up to six seconds. So it could extend the time it takes you to get your scans done. But if you have wake on LAN, you need wake on LAN, not a bad thing to do. Um, finally on this, the auto cleanup, okay? This is scan log entries. This is recordings of how many times or when a machine was scanned, okay? It doesn't, if you change this, it doesn't affect the actual data that's been scanned and restored by a machine. It just cleans up how often that machine got scanned. So if you've got a lot of scanners that are out there that are set on different triggers, you're going to, you know, it's going to build a fairly extensive table per machine for that. So, you know, again, 14 days is the default, you know, bump that down to seven days. So you see what's been scanned in the last week again. You know, minimizing the data that you don't need in your database is going to make it run faster. So things I covered today, you know, again, it's an art, not a science. So find the sweet spot for you, your network and the machine this is running on. But those are the places that you're going to do it. Uh, hopefully this has helped. I'm lectionpdq.com. Thanks for watching.